if it was easy, everyone would get in and they would push out 40, 60, 80 students a year. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Giselle and today I'm going to talk to you about a couple questions that I have been getting for the last couple of days, like a lot. And I love your guys' questions so much, so I figured I should just make a whole video so that you guys can see my answer that I'm pretty much giving to all of you guys. These questions pretty much have to do with the ultrasound program and getting a job after completing your program. The questions that I've been getting are like, what program do you suggest? Or is it hard to get a job after you graduate? So if any of these questions are something that you need answered, go ahead and stick to this whole video because I will hopefully be giving you some insight to this field, the program itself, and getting a job in the sonography world. If these questions are something that you guys are interested in, I would love if you guys grab a snack, grab your drinks, and let's get started. So let's start all the way at the beginning of, I wanna become an ultrasound technologist. I wanna to go to school for this. Where should I go? This question is so broad just because you can study online, you can study at college universities, and you can also study in certified programs that I honestly have no idea about. I've been hearing these from other people in sonography groups. So like I always tell everyone, do your research. The research you have to do is figure out if you want to do a general program, an echo vascular program, and start from there. Because all of these programs are going to offer different pathways and all of you guys are in different cities. All of these schools require different things. So do your research, start at what kind of ultrasound tech do you want to be. I can't really tell you guys what school to go to just because I don't know what kind of ultrasound tech you want to be and then I don't know where you live, I don't know if money is an issue, I don't know if you're going to take out loans and some of these schools require certain types of loans, some schools don't accept loans. So a ton of those things are going to be a factor of where you're going to go to school. And yes, these programs are competitive and most of the time when you see these requirements they'll say like oh you only need a GPA of 2.5 well think about all the other 20 30 students who are trying to also apply to that program with you you need to make sure that you do your best in classes you try to get really good grades you network talk to the professors talk to the counselors the program directors get your name out there I don't want to say like be that annoying person but you kind of have to be that annoying person. To get jobs in the field, you kind of have to know someone. You're going to go through clinicals. So after your clinical, that is a job opportunity right there. Or if they like you enough and they don't have any positions available, those people can refer you to someone else or they will give you a good word for another company. Networking is a huge, huge deal, but to get there, you have to get into a program first. So make sure you guys definitely look up the programs, make sure that you can sit in for ARDMS after the program, make sure that you can take your SPI because you need your SPI exam to get into an ARDMS specialty board exam. So all of those things are later on in the line, but just make sure that you're going to a school that will allow you to sit for the SPI board exam and to take an ARDMS exam. A lot of you guys are asking about these accredited schools versus non-accredited schools. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you know, you're going to be wasting your money if you don't go to an accredited school. and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's going to be okay if you go to a non-accredited school versus an accredited school. Most people are going to tell you to go to an accredited school because that's going to guarantee you to sit for your board exams. Now if you go to a non-accredited school, you should figure out if you're able to sit in your board exams. When I was first starting off in ultrasound, I had no idea about this whole accreditation thing. So now that you guys are doing your research before getting into the programs, make sure you check that out. I did not go to an accredited school and I was able to sit for my board exams after that. So the only thing that really mattered for me was that I was able to sit in for SPI and take the ARDMS board exams. 
I honestly have no idea how that happened, but our program has been there for many years and we have pushed out many ultrasound techs from that program. So, you know, everyone's story is different. There is one accredited program here in the city and I don't know much about them. I hear good things, but other than that, if I had to go back and do it again, knowing if it was accredited or non-accredited, I still would have took the chances and stayed in that program because I already knew many people who went through that program and who had a job. So it kind of like had this, it had a reputation. Most people who came from that program got a job. So I was like, hey, I like this. The rate is probably like 90% people get a job right after they graduate and usually it's if they don't it's because they decided not to go into ultrasound or they moved or something like that. Everyone that was in my program got a job right after. Everyone that I knew before me got a job right after. And I'll tell you right now, in the city, lots of places are hiring. It just honestly depends where you live, it depends how much work you want to put in, it depends how much you're willing to wait for this ultrasound program to get in because I know it is hard to get into these programs. My program takes about 16 people per year and after I applied for that program I did not get in right away. I was an alternate but then someone dropped out and I was able to get in my first time. I know people who applied to the program two, three, four times and they got in eventually. Now are you willing to wait that long? Or is this something that you need to get into right away? Think about the program that you're going to go into, ask the counselors, ask the directors like, hey, what does it look like? What are my chances to get into the program? Getting into the program is the most important part. And then passing, going through your classes one step at a time, take everything day by day. It is a journey and a journey that is going to be extremely hard and difficult, especially life right now. Like it's gonna be very difficult, but nothing worth it comes easy. And if this job was easy, everyone would do it, right? If it was easy, everyone would get in and they would push out 40, 60, 80 students a year. But to be honest, it's hard for us to do that in the ultrasound field. Why? because it's a hands-on job. We have to teach you guys, teach each person how to scan. We have to teach each person skills to scan, what you're looking at. And if you have large classes, it's really hard to focus on the individual, it's really hard to up your skills, and it's gonna be really hard to you know, get that many machines in a place. In my program, there was only three machines, one like really old machine and then two GE machines. You can only fit so many people in that lab. Now there are other labs that have multiple machines, that's great. Multiple professors to teach you, that's also great. It just depends where you live. Are you willing to wait? Are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to learn and do your best to stand out in front of the crowd. I just wanted to hop on here and tell you guys that this career is possible to get into and it is so possible to get a job after you graduate. The field may be saturated in some places and it might be hard to get a full-time job after you graduate right away but there are a lot of opportunities to get per diem jobs, there are a lot of opportunities to get part-time jobs, there are doctor's offices, clinics, outpatient clinics, vascular labs, hospitals, small ERs. There are tons of ultrasound techs needed all over the country, especially during this time. We scan a lot of patients. We make sure that there are no blood clots in patients' legs, in patients' arms. Our job is really needed in the medical field. We are one of the first people you will see when you come into a hospital. We are probably one of the people you're gonna see when you come into the hospital. So I really, really recommend if ultrasound is what you wanna do, please do your research. I can give you like tips and tricks here and there, but I can't tell you what school to go to. I can help you figure out is ultrasound really for you, but I can't tell you you need to get up and move somewhere and go to this school and pay this much money to go to that school. It's scary, right? It's your future, and if it's something that you really want to do, just never give up. Be positive in every situation. There were so many times where I didn't think I would get through the program. There were so many times where I didn't think I would pass an exam. There are so many times where you just doubt yourself, and that's normal. We're all human, and that's going to happen. But at the end of the day, if it's something that you really want to do, if you looked up 
everything about this career. If you really want to help people be a part of the medical field and you truly want to learn how to use a machine, take diagnostic images, and also take care of patients at the same time, then this is the job for you. It's not as stressful as nursing, but it is stressful. It's a different kind of stress. You know, you want to get your job done, but sometimes there are things that'll stop you from getting your job done. Or there are places where it's just so busy that you can get burnt out sometimes. But the field itself is going to be a growing field in the future. It just really sucks that the programs are usually small and competitive because we really do want to cater to each student as much as we can. We want to push out texts into the world that really focus on being a really good sonographer, on not just being a picture taker, but one that is an investigator. And we want hardworking people. We want to instill good skills on these students. Don't be discouraged if you didn't get in your first time try again. Don't be discouraged if you didn't pass a class. Try again. At one point, if you really can't do it, there's going to be a time where you're just going to say, hey, like I can't do it and now I'm going to have to figure out something else. This career is definitely worthwhile, challenging, but rewarding at the end of the day. I love when patients are just so kind. I love when patients thank us. I love when patients realize that we are trying to do something to help them and their lives. So, Ultrasound really is mostly for prevention. You know, you scan carotids to make sure there's no stenosis, to make sure that the plaque isn't growing. You scan aortas to make sure there's no aneurysms, which is a silent killer. And, you know, we do a lot of things that people have no idea we do. So definitely, if you guys are trying to get into the sonography world, there are three questions that you need to ask yourself. The first one is, are you ready to spend money, spend time, and focus on working really hard to get into a program, to complete that program, and still take some exams after that. Like, it's gonna be a couple of years of hard work. Are you willing to put that work in? Are you willing to learn and keep on learning, really, for the rest of your career? Is this something that you want to do? Number two, will you be willing to wait a year or two to get into a program? I was willing to wait a whole year to get into the program. When I saw that alternate by my name, I was really sad at first, but then I was like, you know what, I'm going to try again, it's okay. So are you okay with potentially not getting into the program for your first time? And then number three, is relocating an option for you? Are you willing to relocate to go to a program that is worth your time? Are you willing to relocate to get a job somewhere else? Sometimes people live in areas where there's not a huge need for ultrasound technologists. Well, are you willing to move somewhere where there is a huge need? I hear too that it's kind of hard to get a job because they want the experience. So are you willing to find somewhere that will give you that opportunity to give you experience? So really, I hope you guys take all of this information, you guys soak it in, think about it because this is your future and if it's something that you really want do not give up like like if I gave up I have no idea what I would be doing right now but yeah so I just wanted to make a simple video talk to you guys straight up let you guys know what I'm pretty much telling everyone else because it is scary it is going to be hard but if you want to do it you can do it you know I will be your cheerleader you can always message me on Instagram. You can always comment below. I'm going to answer you. And just know that you have someone on your side that is willing to help you out, give you some tips here and there, and to help you get through your journey. We all need to help each other. We need to support each other. And yeah, definitely keep your questions coming. This video I just wanted to put out there and hope that if you guys really needed this, that it helped you. Yeah, anything else I have to say? I do have a couple videos that are coming out, so stay tuned for that. And I hope that you guys always be kind to one another because you don't know what anyone's going through. Stay positive because this world has a lot of negativity in it. And stay healthy. Do your research. Don't hesitate to ask any questions. I love that you guys are asking these questions. And remember to just never give up on your dreams. Okay, you guys? All right. I'm going to head to bed, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!